Hey, Blue Table fans, guess what? It's high time. We're doing the fantasy battle report, or a not rep, as it's called, meaning I'm just going to videotape whatever, slap it all together, and hope you can make some sense of it. But first, let's take a look at the battlefield, if you can just give me a panoramic here. We're only playing a thousand point game, so what I did is I contracted the board by putting the these uh, things in the corner to kind of make the feasible playing area a little smaller. Uh, this is what I consider a classic fantasy setup. A uh, couple of hills, a couple of forests, usually put something in the middle, but since I've contracted the board already, that's really plenty. And I, I like this setup because it makes it so that, well, you know, do you really want to get crammed into the middle of the board, or do you want to, you know, send some sort of flanking maneuver out around the edge? Maybe not the best. It's good to have a, a hill at least partway in each deployment zone, because then people have somewhere to put their war machines and archers, and that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. But you counteract that. You don't want to give the hill, like, too much of a commanding view of the battlefield, where it can just you know, uh, affect everything, which is why I put these forests here so you can kind of sneak up on them. There can be uh, skirmishers or scouts in there. Now, um, what I found before this game uh, is that you could actually, I took some magnetic sheeting and I just kind of, I cut it to shape and that's what I have these dark riders on. I have one unit not painted for shame and uh, you know, it keeps them, it keeps them pretty steady and allows you to move them around the board without any sort of uh, uh, real problem. Uh, I'm, I'm a real fan of what are called flush movement trays, which is the same thing except for there's a 1 8 inch piece of wood underneath, and those are, uh, those are a really nice feature. Uh, now, if you look at Mike's army here, which is uh, orcs and goblins, you can see he's got some blue table painting standard movement trays, which are... Um, uh, beveled and those look really super nice. They they really put the the figures on display and we, we sell those uh, Relatively inexpensively especially compared to uh, other trays that are similarly priced, but not magnetized and not painted so Away we go just so we can get it underway because I have like an hour and a half before I gotta go and uh, I, I just went ahead and set up my army yeah, this is this is a thousand points right here. I have two units of fast cavalry, and one unit of infantry, and uh, a couple of uh, war machines. I, I I really think that's it. Yep, that's it. Now, um, just a couple of notes here. Oh, go ahead and stop it and then restart. Okay, just a couple notes about my army. Uh, Dark Elves are one of the few armies that have cavalry as troops choices. The Dark Riders are, did I say troops? That's 40k. Core. Core choices. And in a, in a, a 2,000 point game, you have to have at least three uh, core choices. In a 1,000, I think you have to have two. And uh, so anyway, uh, Dark Elves and Bretonians both have cavalry as core choices. And I, I, I really like that. Uh, it, fast cavalry is a big... Um, uh, favorite of mine. I've got a sorceress with this unit here. We'll see if she's efficacious. And uh, then I have a special choice, which is kind of like elites in Warhammer Fantasy, and um, of these uh, Blackguard. Now, they're great models. They're awesome in the game. They're stubborn, which means they take their, no matter how badly they lose a combat, they take it on their same high leadership. I got my leader in there. And... Um, my strategy here is pretty simple. I plan on moving this unit up here next to this forest. Uh, forests are doom in f uh, fantasy because it takes forever to muddle your way out of them. But I'm going to refuse a flank here. Mike's like, aha, now I know your strategy, foolish elf. Well, it won't be the last time I've, I'll be called that. Well, Okay, we're here with Mike Dunn. Ahoy. Painter, modeler, <laughs> and war gamer extraordinaire. Yep. What do you got? Well, first of all, everything I have is painted, so I should get a reroll. Yeah, um, I agree. <laughs> but I've got, I also, everything I have is core. I have one special choice, it's the chariots. Mm -hmm. um, these, the spider riders and the uh, goblin wolf riders are both uh, light cavalry. They're both core choices. I've got a huge beefed up unit of orc boys. Uh -huh. 
um, that should perform very well. I've got two units of goblins. This one's 25, this one's got 20. Uh, they're pretty weedy. They're like the cheapest uh, individual model in the game. But there's a lot of them, and they've got some sneaky tricks being goblins. They're, yeah. They're quite crafty. Um, known for their... Don't think uh, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, known for their... Uh, their wily ways. Uh, Goblin go? fanatics. Yeah, fanatics. That uh, jump out. These. Oh, they're oh, yeah. terrible. They're the yep. worst thing ever. Yeah, yeah. so... We'll have some surprises. Last time I away. came up against those, I was like, how bad could they be? <laughs> Very bad. Tear through your units yeah. pretty good. I've got a goblin shaman. Right. And There's your I've wizard. Got, uh, this guy is awesome. That's, He's on a new juggernaut. Yeah. Um, which is uh, like a... In the orc book, there's rules for a... Oh, what is it called? An ironback boar. And supposedly okay. the, the chaos dwarves build these ironback boars and they trade them to the uh, really? orcs and the ogres. And so they're and mechanical. Oh, yeah. It's an oh, enchanted item. Uh, it's 35 points in the book. It, it counts as a mini chariot. When wow. chariots hit a unit, you get impact hits, yeah. so this gives you some impact well, hits, Well, that's too. nice to know. Yeah, and they don't make a model, so I decided, hey, that looks great. I, I think it's clever. So, All right, well, let's get playing. Okay. Now, Norm... Normally you take turns setting up like one unit at a time, but I went ahead and just set up so we can get uh, get going with our lives. Um, I'm gonna. Okay, so here's a mic setup. You got wolf riders, chariot, wolf riders, chariot. coming in for a long flank. General, um, orc boys, two units of goblins with a shaman in between. And the spider riders are awesome because they can move through cover, forest, anything with no penalties. Yeah, that's great. So they're going to okay. help me on this side, protect the goblins, basically. Well, uh, whoever finishes deployment first, which would have been me because I have less units, gets plus one on their roll for option to go first. I rolled a five. So Mike needs a six to tie for a reroll. He doesn't. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go first. Okay, got a roll for uh, magic users' spells, or wizards, I think they're called. And so I have a level two wizard, so she gets two spells. And you roll, I rolled a one and a three. So that's chill wind and word of pain. Now let's say I had rolled a four and a three. I could have switched either of these for the first spell, the number one spell. And they, they get progressively more powerful and harder to cast as you get higher up in the numbers. So if I had rolled a four and a three, I could have traded out spell four for spell one if I had wanted. So there you go. And Dark Elves automatically get power of darkness. Lots of fun. Uh, 